He carries the name of a god but lives the life of a fool. Beneath the jungle canopy, the Hercules beetle gleams like a living tank, armoured, massive, unstoppable. It can lift the weight of its world, yet never understands why it fights. Its muscles obey instincts older than thought, its battles echo myths that mean nothing to it. Strength made him a legend, and a prisoner inside his own shell. Beneath the dripping leaves of Central and South America's rainforests, a gleaming shape crawls across the bark. A living relic of strength. The Hercules beetle, Dynasties Hercules, is nature's contradiction. An insect named after a hero who conquered monsters, yet itself bound by instincts it can never outgrow. Reaching up to 17 centimetres in length, it is one of the largest beetles in existence, its body encased in armour that glistens under the stormy light. To the untrained eye, it looks invincible, a miniature knight of the jungle, but every part of its body tells a harsher truth. The enormous horn, the hard shell, the thick legs, none were built for peace. They are weapons forged for a single purpose. Combat. The males wield their horns like warriors of an endless war flipping and crushing rivals in battles that echo through the trees. Below the canopy, this glittering colossus is both beautiful and brutal, its existence a mirror of myth turned upside down, a titan not blessed by the gods but trapped in nature's most primitive test, survival through struggle. Its exoskeleton is a marvel of biological engineering, light enough to fly, yet dense enough to withstand the jaws of predators, Layers of microscopic fibres crisscross beneath the glossy surface, forming a natural suit of armour. When the air grows damp, pigments shift, turning the shell from pale olive to deep black. This chameleon-like transformation is not vanity, it's adaptation. The beetle's body becomes a mirror of the forest, shining in dryness, fading in rain. Underneath that shifting surface, muscle fibres pull like cables on a suspension bridge. That structure gives the Hercules beetle its staggering strength, the ability to lift 850 times its own body weight. If humans possessed the same proportion, a person could hoist a fully loaded airplane. Yet nature's irony cuts deep. All that power serves no higher purpose. It doesn't protect colonies, build shelters, or ensure survival. It only prepares for brief, violent duels that end as quickly as they begin. Beneath the armour lies a truth evolution never explained. Sometimes, being strong doesn't mean being safe. For most of its existence, the Hercules beetle never sees the sun. It spends nearly two years buried beneath rotting logs, living as a pale, plump lava in a world of decay. Down there, time moves differently. Slow, damp and silent. The lava feeds on decomposing wood, recycling the dead into the living. It grows until it reaches the size of a human finger, its skin thick and soft like wet parchment. For the forest, this hidden phase is essential. For the beetle, it is purgatory. Everything it will ever become depends on this long invisible labour. Then one day, it pupates, sealing itself in a hardened cocoon of soil and bark. Weeks later, it emerges reborn, armoured and radiant, ready to live, but not for long. As an adult, the Hercules beetle has only about six months to do everything nature demands. To feed, to fight, to mate, and to die. It spends more time preparing for life than living it. Its story is one of cruel arithmetic. Twenty-four months of darkness exchange for half a year of chaos. In the jungle, even giants are short-lived. The Hercules beetle's horn is both its crown and its curse. In males, this enormous structure curves forward like a pair of jaws, designed to grip and flip rivals from branches. It can be longer than the beetle's entire body, turning each duel into a miniature version of mythic combat. Yet what evolution gave as a weapon, it also made a burden. The horn is heavy, awkward, and aerodynamically disastrous. Flying becomes a clumsy struggle, landing often ends in a crash. The beetle's huge frame makes hiding nearly impossible, a glowing target for birds and snakes. Females, smaller and hornless, survive longer and conserve their strength for reproduction. In contrast, the males are doomed by their own magnificence. They carry their pride like a monument carved from weakness. The horn may dazzle collectors and frighten enemies, but it drags its bearer toward exhaustion and early death. Beauty becomes ballast. Glory becomes gravity. Evolution, indifferent as ever, keeps the design. 
because for nature, survival of the species matters more than survival of the individual. When the rains end and the air grows thick with the scent of fermenting fruit, the jungle transforms into an arena. High among the branches, male Hercules beetles converge on the same feeding spot. A leaking fig, a sap-covered trunk, or the soft bark of a banana plant. Somewhere nearby, a female waits. The males find each other first. What follows is not a ritual, but a collision. Two armoured titans rear up on opposite sides of a branch, their horns locking in a brutal embrace. They shove, twist and lift, each trying to hurl the other into the air. The sound is strange, not roaring, but scraping, shell grinding against shell, wings trembling beneath the strain. A single match can last minutes. A misstep means a 40-foot fall into the mud. The winner earns only a moment, just enough to mate before another challenger arrives. The loser may crawl away broken, unable to fly again. There are no spectators, no glory, no reward beyond instinct. In these battles, power is both the prize and the punishment. The Hercules beetle fights because it must, not because it wins. Inside that massive armoured head lies a brain no larger than a sesame seed. Within it flicker only reflexes, patterns coded by evolution, not thought. The beetle doesn't plan, doesn't wonder, doesn't remember. It moves because something older than reason commands it to. It sees movement and attacks, smells a female and flies, feels threat and freezes. Its mind is a circuit of survival with no room for learning or mercy. The muscles, the horn, the exoskeleton, all instruments of a will that never questions itself. If a predator grabs it, the beetle thrashes until the world goes dark. If a human hand lifts it, it struggles without understanding. Its strength is mechanical, magnificent, and meaningless. A creature that can lift mountains of wood is ruled by a brain too small to comprehend what it is lifting. It survives not by wisdom, but by accident. Nature gave it the body of a god, but the mind of a machine. A paradox crawling through the leaves, unaware of its own tragedy. When danger approaches, the Hercules beetle does something unexpected. It hisses, not from its mouth, but by rubbing its wings against its abdomen plates, creating a sharp, rasping sound that echoes through the undergrowth. It's both warning and performance, a desperate signal that says, I am not easy prey. Yet in the tangled food chain of the rainforest, sound means little. Snakes do not listen, monkeys do not hesitate, and birds strike before they even see. The beetle's armour deflects claws, but not fangs. Its horn can push, but never pierce. Against larger predators, its strength becomes irrelevant. Even ants, those tireless scavengers, can overwhelm it once it falls to the forest floor. Its hiss fades into the hum of insects, the background noise of endless consumption. In this world, survival is not about might. It's about timing, luck, and invisibility. The Hercules beetle, bright and bold, possesses none of these. Its heavy body makes flight clumsy. Its brilliance turns camouflage into spectacle. Every night, the forest fills with the rhythm of its struggle. Buzzing, scraping, hissing. A symphony of futility that vanishes with dawn. The creature named for power becomes just another whisper beneath the leaves. Few realise that beneath the beetle's armour lies a masterpiece of natural physics. The Hercules beetle's shell isn't painted with pigment. It's structured like a prism. Layers of microscopic scales bend and scatter light, creating shimmering hues that shift with humidity. When the air is dry, light bounces through empty pockets in the shell, producing a golden green glow. When moisture fills those gaps, light scatters differently darkening the shell to a deep, velvet black. It's nature's own nanotechnology, long before humans dreamed of smart materials. Scientists have studied this phenomenon to design humidity sensors, reflective coatings, and adaptive camouflage fabrics. Yet for the beetle, this beauty has no meaning. Its changing colour is not self-expression, it's self-defence. The shift hides it from predators when it rains and reveals it when the forest dries a fragile illusion of safety. Under sunlight, the beetle looks like a gem. Under rain, a shadow. Each hue tells a story of survival written in photons. The irony is that such brilliance, meant to conceal, often betrays it instead. Collectors see it, humans reach for it, and what began as camouflage becomes a lure. Nature's art, 
misunderstood, admired, and destroyed by the same curious hands. Once a symbol of wild strength, the Hercules beetle has become a curiosity sold by the thousands. In markets from Bogota to Tokyo, its glossy shell gleams under fluorescent light, labelled, priced, and pinned behind glass. Collectors prize the males with the longest horns, the grand champions of a beauty contest they never chose to enter. Tourists buy preserved beetles as souvenirs, their bodies lacquered until they shine like metal. Breeders raise them for bug fights, a popular pastime in parts of Asia, where two males are placed on a branch to battle as spectators cheer. The losers are discarded, the winners are crowned, then sold. In captivity, their strength becomes entertainment, their myth repackaged for human amusement. Some live longer under human care, but their world shrinks to plastic boxes lined with soil and fruit jelly. The jungle, once vast and echoing with rain, is reduced to a container. The beetle that could lift a log now pushes against a transparent wall, unable to escape its admirers. Its fate mirrors ours. Power celebrated, freedom forgotten. In the end, the Hercules becomes a trinket, a legend trapped behind glass, its story retold by those who never understood it. He can lift mountains of wood, but not the weight of his destiny. His strength, the very trait that defines him, is the reason for his downfall. Born to fight, he never learns peace. Born to conquer, he never knows why. In a world that worships power, the Hercules beetle is the perfect irony, a creature that proves strength alone cannot save you. When he dies, his horn remains, gleaming like a relic from another age, a monument to misplaced evolution. The forest reclaims him quietly. Ants pick his shell clean, rain seeps through his armour, and within weeks, even his bones of chitin return to dust. Only the horn endures, shining faintly in the mud, beauty born of violence. His story is a mirror for the human condition. We build, we fight, we strive for greatness, yet so often, we too forget the purpose behind our struggle. The Hercules beetle lifts the world but never escapes it. His strength is his cage, his armour his prison, his legend his curse. And when silence returns to the jungle, one truth remains. In nature, power without meaning is the heaviest burden of all.